Hi, this is James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek, and I want to discuss, based on the REC 2020 demonstration that I did, sponsored by Barco, Blackmagic Resolve, um, Blackmagic Design Resolve, Symbian, ACS, is one of the big topics on, on, at that demo is that what REC 2020 really brings us is it's pretty much part of the roadmap to going to a high dynamic range. Now, at the demonstration, I was really trying to impress upon the people like this is the future, next color space, etc. It's a big part of Rec 2020. Um, CES so this year, uh, the Blu-ray Foundation announced that their new standards for doing high dynamic range Blu-ray is like HDR10, which is basically a 10-bit, um, thousand-nit based um, Rec 2020 distribute uh, deliverable. Now. It's April now. There's these at CES. Pretty much every vendor was showing um, high dynamic range televisions. LG was showing their 440 nit OLED, which is probably the the video file type level. But domestic wise, if you're in a high ambient light sort of environment, the more typical thousand nit um, uh, high dynamic range televisions were also on display. So pretty much displays for e any situation for f great, it's a fantastic. I cannot wait to get uh, a screen with a color gamut that these things can do in my home. Because um, I've been working in this room for a long time, been working with P3 and going home and having a look at 709 and looking at P3 all day uh, was never something that you know, was very good. So all these dis displays at CES, I've pretty much tried to capture anyone talking about televisions and all the coverage. They all said, in terms of the color gamut of these new TVs, it's pretty much everything was P3 or better. They weren't really willing to give you exact numbers, but P3 or better. So that's a massive jump in the quality of the color gamut and what can be reproduced in the screens in the home to compared to 709. So we're jumping up to pretty much to at least cinema grade colors in the home and new brightnesses. So when you consider, just consider that if you've seen a, if you've actually seen a, a 709 screen sitting next to a P3 screen, the difference is astounding, right? It's huge. Now we're talking about 709 screens sitting next to a P3 or better plus high dynamic range. And now by the end of the year, every consumer electronics store in the world is going to have one third of the sta old old televisions, you know, you know, half of the old and half of the new. And it's going to look like old pitiful little screens on one side and these new fantastic looking screens on the other. Now you can walk into a showroom and sit, see on the back of the wall, 50 meters away, you'll still see the difference. And this is one of the reasons why high dynamic range is expected to get the amazing traction that the consumer electronics TV makers have always wanted to. So we did, let's go over with them in the past. We had um, 3D, pretty much made blurry pictures, needed glasses, no one wanted it, didn't really fly very well at all. Then we had uh, high frame rate. Again, some people said it looked like um, soap opera stuff, but really, realistically, it's not really noticeable. Then we had 4K. Again, if you have a look at the standard distances, etc., 4K only really makes a difference when you're standing right up with your nose against the screen, which no one really does. So what has been the benefit to the end consumer? Well, there really hasn't been much of a benefit. So can you blame them for not having much of a trend? You know, there's very little traction to all these new technologies. It hasn't given people a reason to want to upgrade when their television works very well today. Well, high dynamic range, is most likely going to give you, even if you're thinking about buying a new television, you go in there and you see these new screens with a better color gamut and the high dynamic range capabilities, it's going to push people over the, over the line and it is going to generate a reasonably big new transition for everyone to switch over their screens again to the next quality jump because it is that apparent and that, you know, it's a big difference and I can tell you that I can't wait to, to get them and I'm sure a lot of people out there can't wait to get the new 65, 55 inch televisions with this new capabilities. So what can we expect? Well, I, can, I, I expect myself by the end of the year a massive sale in these new televisions. And soon after that, I expect the streaming services to offer um, high dynamic range services, premium services to anyone with these screens. I'm sure there'll be a lot of partnerships. Even in the past year, Amazon, there was a very early Amazon with it, Samsung, where they had a limited number of high dynamic range on their very initial 
high dynamic range televisions. But once these screens are on all the manufacturers, they've got Netflix or um, Stan or whatever your streaming services in your part of the world, that'll be on there and they'll have the option to display high dynamic range content. So the amount of money that's going to be poured into this from the TV manufacturers and the streaming manufacturers to try and move everyone over to the streaming technologies because obviously the streaming technology people want to fragment the traditional systems as much as possible so they're very keen to make this a big deal because it'll take a long time for well imagine all the infrastructure that has to be replaced and how many years it'll take to upgrade it to high dynamic range even a lot of the standards are not completely ready for doing that sort of um, um, infrastructure changeover it's still some of those things are still well in the standards committee but just sending a high dynamic range via streaming producer is very possible today with the standards that we currently have so there by the middle of next year there is going to be a big big demand to put content premium content onto these high dynamic range premium channels do you want to be on these high dynamic range premium channels with premium prices and being the only ones there new land grab well obviously you probably will if you have content of any particular value at all and that's why this is an important time and probably one of the most important times to get on top of this technology and start to get your educational hat on it's one of the reasons i started this rec 2020 demo having access to this this equipment to give people enough understanding and show them a big enough difference to get the get the light to go on so they can start to realize how big this train is coming down the track so that's probably one of the more interesting topics and discussions that happened at this demonstration and i really want to push that forward into the community and to get them prepared um, a lot of the things i say when i do my videos i like informed decisions i'm trying to inform you of what's going on why it's happening before it gets to you so you're in a better position to take advantage of it knowing where the ball's going to go you can take advantage of it so let's try and get get ahead of that ball get ahead of that puck and try and hit it for the goals because there's an opportunity here for all of us so please, thank you for watching my videos and i'll have more videos on these topics coming in the future and obviously i'll be trying to be push this topic and follow it at nab where obviously uh, the pointy head of the spear on these topics will be uh, at their most prevalent to understand listen and to, to learn Anyway, bye for now from James Garden, the Sinister Geek, on my 20, uh, Rec 2020 uh, presentation here in Melbourne, Australia.